Okay, so if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you are someone who really wants to learn to code. You have probably seen the potential that learning this skill can have for you. Maybe you want to build a better life for yourself. Maybe you're just excited about problem solving and like the creative aspect of coding. But you are coming to the realization that learning to code is just really hard. But like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's going to be easy. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're not going to go through hours and hours of agony of literally wanting to smash your keyboard because of some dumb error that you can't figure out how to do. But if you are willing to put in the hard work, if you are willing to do exactly the things that I lay out in this video, I promise you that you will succeed because almost no one is willing to do it. So if you're one of the people who is, you can get there. From the day that I started writing code for the first time, it took me only four months to get my first job as a full stack developer at a big company in London. And I know now you're saying that, well, didn't you just say that it's not easy, but you did it in four months? Yeah, I, I said it's not easy. I didn't say that it cannot be far. So that is why precisely in this video, I wanna tell you exactly what you should focus on if you wanna get a job as fast as possible. Learning to code is hard. Learning to code fast and getting a job fast are even harder. But if you are willing to do that, if you're willing to put in the hard work, here is exactly how you go about it. Before we get started, I'd like to announce that I'm gonna be doing my first ever Q&A stream. Hooray. And hooray! On 8th of December, this is gonna be your chance to finally ask me all the questions you have, whether it's about programming or life or whatever else really. And so there's gonna be a link down below in the description. It's gonna be hosted on a platform called Superpeer. So make sure you go sign up for it right now so that you don't miss when this stream goes live because there's gonna be some pretty exciting things announced on that live stream. Step one, you need to pick an area of programming to focus on. And I'm going to just cut the fluff here and just tell you exactly what you should pick in 2022 and 2023 three, which is web development. First, it's the most common area of programming, so it has the most opportunity. It's the easiest area of programming to learn really fast. That's it. Now, if you have a particular interest for some field like mobile development, you should absolutely pursue whatever area that you want. All of these areas of programming and tech can give you an amazing life and amazing career, but whatever you choose, if you want to get a job as fast as possible, what I would do is just pick one and just stick to it. Don't do what I did and spend like one month learning Python scripting then two months doing like full stack web development and then go back to Python for a month and then go into AI. Like when I did my learning to code journey throughout like a gap year that I was doing last year in Finland, I already had a job offer in my bag and I talked more about how that happened in this video right here if you are interested. So I was already at the point where I didn't have to optimize for getting a job as fast as possible and I was able to just spend the year to explore many different areas. Like exploring many different areas can be wonderful but if specifically you just need a job as fast as possible that's not the way to go. Step number two is to do an online bootcamp. The tons of these out there people always ask me what is the best course to take and stuff like that but here's the thing about courses none of them are really special in any way just choose a teacher that you think has an engaging style and just stick to one program but i know that even though i said that you will still ask me like why I exactly recommend so here are two options for a free option you, you really cannot go wrong with the odin project i did around half of this during my own journey before i moved on to other resources uh, it's really detailed really high quality considering it's free it's absolutely fantastic and you can totally learn to code for completely free like i did this myself now that i cannot for it, I have started to see the value of also investing money into paid materials because they can be higher quality because when someone's getting paid for them, they're just willing to put in more effort. So if you are willing to invest for a paid option, my recommendation is Zero to Mastery's Web Developer Bootcamp or one of their other bootcamps if you're going for a different area. Zero to Mastery are my favorite coding course platform that I still use to this day. It's really nothing. It's like 40 bucks a month or something like that. And you get access to like, I think 30 different courses or something like that. I've done a bunch of them myself. They're extremely high quality and they're very beginner friendly and explained in a way that even like a literal dumbass can understand them. And so that's why I really love them and that's why I keep recommending them to you guys because I think they're really great and that's why I also choose to be affiliated with them. So there is a 10% discount code down below in the description. So yeah, if you use that, I also obviously benefit as well. But as I said, I generally use this myself. So after you finish that and you religiously build all the projects that they ask you to do, you can now move on to step three, which is to build two to three impressive portfolio projects. But I hear you asking, 
What makes a good and impressive portfolio project anyway? Well, conveniently, I made a full video on the top principles that you need to implement in your project, and you can watch that video right here. But in summary, your project should showcase Number one, a range of skills. And to make sure you do this, I recommend you simply build a few CRUD applications of some sort where you use a front end and a back end, you implement user authentication, you connect the database and ideally interact with some sort of API. The reason you want these features in particular is because they are essentially the building blocks of any large software system and something that you'll just need to know in any kind of job. On top of that, you want to build something unique or at least your own version of something that already exists. And ideally, you want your project to be very easily understandable by anyone in just a glance and to have a very clean UI. Because if your project looks messy, literally a recruiter will assume that the code is just as messy. Other than that, it is time to start applying, whether it's applying for jobs or for freelance positions or whatever you're doing. At this stage, there are two sort of divergent, divergent paths that you can take. There's big companies and there's small companies. For bigger companies, your focus should entirely be on learning data structures and algorithms and then just grind lead code like an absolute animal until you can basically solve at least a medium level lead code question. That's what I see. That's what seems to be the level that junior level interviews are at. And by the way, if you don't know what data structures are and what algorithms are, you want to like a like a really dumb explanation of what they are. I actually made these two explanations that have been really popular on my channel that you might want to check out. So when it comes to resources to properly learning data structures and algorithms, there's two that are currently my favorite ones. First is the algorithm specialization from Coursera. This is like reasonably hard course. So if you are sort of mathy and you don't mind the course being very challenging and some like very theoretical as well, uh, this is probably the one that I would choose. I enjoyed it, but it probably goes deeper than you would need to know. So the other option is again, Zero to Masteries, Master Coding Interview Bootcamp. I think it's the first ever data structures and algorithms program that I did myself personally. If you used one of the courses from the previous step with the same subscription, you also get access to this one. But if you are applying for smaller companies, you want to emphasize simply just being really good at a specific language slash tech stack because from my understanding these types of companies because they hire less based on potential and more based on already like actual skill it's less likely that they will have lead code style interviews and more likely that they will have like a take home coding tiles or something like that because they just want to see what you can do now which also means that the job is probably going to be it's going to probably going to have higher expectations and it's probably going to be a bit more challenging but also you're going to learn more again from what i know but you do also get paid less which you know depends on what you're optimizing for so in terms of how long this is actually going to take that is going to entirely depend on how much time and effort you are willing to invest in learning every single day. My mindset is always to work as hard as possible at the start because with almost anything, once you get your foot in the door, everything becomes so much easier. And I know that not everyone thinks in this way and if you wanna be like, well, work-life balance, all of that, like, sure, that's fine, you, you can do what you want, but just realize that the less you're willing to learn and the more you wanna focus on like life and getting drunk or whatever, then the slower, it's going to happen. I did this in four months. It wasn't easy, but it was because during that four months, I was really every single day I was coding for like hours. And if you want me to make a full video on like how many hours I was coding every day, like how I manage my time and all of that, I can do that. Let me know down below. Like I understand work-life balance is important, but the truth is that if you really want success in the beginning, so when you're just getting started, like getting this whole machine of learning to code, like off the ground, you are going to probably have to go through a period of a lot less work-life balance than you might actually want. I've been listening to a lot of successful entrepreneurs recently because like I'm now sort of an entrepreneur with this YouTube channel and I wanna be an entrepreneur when it comes to building my own software and all of that. And what all of them say, at the end of the day, they really value work-life balance, but it's always like you need to earn the right to enjoy work-life balance. But if you wanna achieve something extraordinary really fast, or at all, really, you're going to have to put in extraordinary effort. So that's why I always emphasize, just enjoy the process of coding. Like get to the point where you can really just love putting in the hard work and you need to start 
like enjoying the feeling of doing the hard things. I work extremely hard. I have a full-time job, I'm building my project and I'm, I'm, and I'm making like two videos a week on this channel. But I guarantee you, I have more fulfillment in my life than a lot of people who basically don't do anything useful. I'm so glad I found this thing with coding and now with this YouTube that I can literally just enjoy, like love the process of putting in like super hard work every single day. I'm sure like in the moment, you might not feel like you're enjoying it, but it's like the point is the fulfillment that you get at the end of it when you get something really hard done and in the evening, like 8 p.m., even though I, like last night, I didn't feel like continuing to work on my personal website that I'm building right now. I'm like upgrading my personal website. I didn't feel like doing it, but I did it anyway for like two hours and I felt so good afterwards. Like that is the thing that keeps me going. And if you could just get to that point, like I promise you, you will eventually get there. So I want you to listen to this. If you just put in enough effort to just not absolutely suck, you will win by default because no one else does that. And I know this can all sound like a very harsh truth or like, like controversial, but I really hope that hearing this helps someone. So if you want a more detailed account of basically everything that I just said, I actually made a Skillshare class that you can watch for completely free by clicking the link down below in the description. So essentially you can watch that video for like all the details of everything that I know and especially the first section I think is going to be really valuable to you because it includes a lot of stuff that you probably don't even realize are important to consider in the first place. With that, again, make sure to also sign up down below to my free Q&A live stream that I'm doing on Superpeer. Just be excited to fail, fail a lot, break things, and enjoy the journey. I'll see you next time. Bye.